All right, the stage is yours. Okay, hi. My name is Lena Svensson from Photonics Sweden. I will give you an overview of Photonics, not focused especially on Sweden, but uh, all over the technology. What's Photonics? Well, you find it in optical telecom, photovoltaic, LED lighting, displays, lasers in manufacturing, medical optics, machine vision, optical components. And we have a EU project that supports it. Uh, Light spectrum, well, it's very good that uh, the sensitivity of the eye is uh, also those colors coming from the sun. But it's an electromagnetic spectrum that in photonics we talk from gamma rays up to infrared, so the visual part is a very small fraction. And I talk shortly about the Nobel Prize that Sunny asked me about. So uh, during the t past 25 years, there's been more than 20 times uh, prizes in photonics. And I show you some of the more specific ones. Cow, he was given the uh, prize for optical fiber, and Boyle and Smith for the CCD sensor. And Akasi, uh, Amano, Nakamura was given the prize for the blue LED light which then give us the possibility to generate white LEDs. And then we have uh, the optical quizzers from, for Ashkin and uh, Moreau and Strickland for the short high-intensity pulses that we now can see are used in medicine, but also in manufacturing. Just a short about uh, Photonics Sweden. We have university members, we have large members, we have supplier members, we have small and mid-sized company members. And what we do, well, we arrange every year optics and photonics days, a conference with parallel sessions with academia in industrial applications. And next one will be in October up in Umeå. So this will be the first one after the pandemic. We also arrange something which is called optopopsy seminars. Uh, where people can come, network, and then we have beers and sandwiches and uh, discuss things. That's very popular. And we've been involved in 10 EU projects, and right now there are three ones. And Photon Hub is the one that uh, really encourages ones to have cross-border collaboration. We arrange uh, workshops. Uh, for, for instance, Photonics for Recycling Waste Material and Steel Production. In fact, um, up in Skellefteå, Boliden has one of the largest uh, electronic scrap facility. And we also run, arrange uh, photonics for agriculture and food. It was uh, last, uh, in November last year we had it. And we're also exhibiting at Laser World of Photonics. And two weeks ago we had something called Kala Camp Open KTH Open House for students. And we had uh, 138 uh, registered and 80 people were on site and the other on uh, Zoom. We are also having something called Nordic Photonics Forum meetings, which was uh, together with Photonics Finland. Uh, we started in early 2017, and right now we have had uh, 10 meetings. This possibility to network, meet each other, and create business to business, and also discuss different applications. And now I come to daily hidden photonics. Well, the blue LED is emitting to a phosphor that will generate red, green, and blue, so we get a combination which the eye is, will see as white light. There's also uh, infrared sensors that can detect CO2 content. That's very good when you want to control the air quality in larger space areas. The same technology can be used for alcohol testing for safe driving. And then we also have um, ultraviolet, UVC, which will penetrate the DNA and uh, it inactivates bacteria, viruses, spores, and modules. And uh, Osram has come up with such a light source for uh, getting rid of these viruses. It, it kills 99.9%. But also during the pandemic in Shanghai, 
uh, the Chinese had a disinfection line for public bus transports. So it took five to seven minutes to clean the whole bus. The same technology for medical mask. But one thing that is um, used all over the world, but the largest one is in Chicago, is um, UV disinfection for waste water treatment. And they can process 1.7 million cubic meter per day. And then also remote tower control uh, for airports, small airports that doesn't, it costs too much to handle them. So instead of closing them down, they can be remotely controlled, open in the morning, closed in the evening. And cameras, we use cameras and the CCD sensors was developed to CMOS sensor, which in case is more effective. And Canon here is an example of their first full frame camera. And they moved on now with other brands like uh, Sony and Nikon. And they came up with this uh, uh, mirrorless camera. But here is something that you perhaps already have in your pocket, but you don't realize that there is a very specific design uh, about this uh, optics. The, there is a zoom, a very small zoom. I think the height is 5.7 millimeters. It's very compact. This one example is from Oppo, but uh, uh, Sony has something that they have released now and Samsung as well. Communication. If you combine, for instance, here, 40 channels in one single optical fiber, you can have 100 gigabit per second transformation. And of course, it's uh, much more today, perhaps. This was some years ago. But you, by changing the wavelength, just a small fr fraction, you can, in fact, combine a lot of wavelengths in one fiber. And this is very interesting. In 1996, there wasn't that many uh, submarine cables. But in 2000, you can see there was transatlantic cables communicating all over the world, and the internet was starting up. And today, it looks like this. The whole ocean floor is covered with optical cables. And the key findings here, Ericsson said that it was 38 exabytes in 2019, and expecting 160 exabytes per month in 2025. And 45% will be roughly based on 5G. But there is another technology called light fidelity, which will have, uh, it, it will not be broadcast, it will be in, in a specific volume where you communicate with light. Agriculture, we have smart farming by controlling the wavelengths. You can have control over, for instance, here is greenhouse tomatoes. They are growing very fast, but also uh, Philips, they have these greenhouses. And farming, the network farming is discussed today. It's there already. Here you have some examples. And one is, for instance, that you have the nitrogen sensor that you can end sensor that you really know how, how the field is looking. Fertilizing is very highly controlled. In fact, uh, this field, uh, the agriculture was the first one adopting a GPS. LIDAR is used, for instance, here also. Uh, they have uh, UAVs with a different kind of sensors. It can be LIDAR, it can also be multispectral cameras. Here in Latvia, there is a company, a startup, uh, Weedbot. They have an AI system, and they identify the weeds, and by blue laser pulses, they kill the weeds. And the speed is 300 meters an hour. And time of flight, you use laser to make a 3D uh, image of the tea, uh, position of the teacups of the cows. So this is De Laval, and they have these milk robots, five milk robots can handle 700 cows. So it's a completely automated system, and the cows really like to go in there and getting cleaned, and they get milked. Food processing, you have multispectral imaging with different kind of wavelengths. You can find different kind of uh, possible possibilities within the control of uh, food, the food inspection. 
And here, for instance, uh, to the left, you will see an area infrared camera that really can uh, detect the defect of this apple, while uh, the vision camera can't see it. It sees it like the eye. And to the right, you see the, it's also X-ray used to see if there are any strange objects in the food. But while you have packaged the food, it's also possible to measure the, if there is any gas leakage. If that is controlled, then you know that this food can be safe in the refrigerator for up to one month. Automotive, automotive today, you're not aware of it, but there is more and more uh, technology based on photonics. You have infrared cameras, you have visual cameras, you have LIDAR, and a lot of other sensors. Uh, this is how uh, LIDAR is working, light detection and ranging. And today, for instance, this is an example of Elodyne. That small uh, piece uh, can have a range up to 100 meters. And BMW, they developed the laser light. They have a la blue laser diode pumping this phosphor. And to the right, you will see a much brighter illumination from your headlight compared to the xenon light to the left. And intelligent lighting is also used by controlling uh, how the light is transmitted out from the, the car and not dazzling the meeting car. Security, you have infrared camera. Here you can see the different kind of the temperature of this motorcycle. But it's also used for airport control to see if there is a, a temperature high, too high. A person has too high temperature. They have to go to the doctor, not allowed to in, go into the plane. But also in surveillance and defense, you have different uh, infrared detection. 3D laser scanning, this is from Trimble. They can scan a uh, whole building, but also inside uh, dif different kind of uh, equipment installed. Because once installed, you don't have the complete uh, schematics. So you do a 3D scan of it. And this is how good uh, aerial 3D mapping can look like. Tubi, uh, it's a company that really, from the computer, can track where you are looking at it. First, it was developed for disabled people, but now it's for the gaming industry. Manufacturing, extreme ultraviolet is used to make this uh, CPU down to 3 nanometers today. And also the lasers. Thanks to the lasers, we have the smartphones. Solar cells. Micronic was one that really have made the master machine to develop the high resolution screens. A laser is also used for laser cleaning, metrology, medicals. You have the therapy, and also for prostate cancer, they use uh, this uh, technology. So, I shorted it from 15 to 13 minutes. Thank you very much. Excellent, excellent. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Swenson, for the presentation.